In the news at noon, presidency distances self from current amendment to Nigerian Press Council Act by National Assembly. Federation Accounts Allocation Committee shares 605.958 billion naira as allocation for month of May to three tiers of government. Seasoned Minister of the Gospel of Christ and Legal Practitioner Reverend Barrister Philip Uko launches fifth classic entitled Objection My Lord. On the foreign scene, former Philippine President Benigno Aquino dies at 61. While in sports, NBA club Boston Celtics to make Brooklyn Nets assistant Emil Docker its new coach. Details coming up shortly. Good afternoon and welcome to the news on Planet Radio 101.1 FM. Uyo, my name is Saviour Robert. First in the news this afternoon, there is a report that the presidency has said it has no hands in the current amendment to the Nigerian Press Council NPC Act and the National Broadcasting Commission NBC Act by the National Assembly. Addressing State House correspondents after yesterday's virtual Federal Executive Council FEC meeting, presided over by President Mohamed Bahari, the special advisor to the President and Media and Publicity Femi Adeshina, said the proposed amendments had nothing to do with the presidency but a government matter. According to him, the amendment move is a government thing which only the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, can address. Media stakeholders have reportedly criticized the move to amend the acts, with some saying it is like a reintroduction of the obnoxious decree number no. 4. On finances, the Federation Accounts Allocation Committee FAC at its virtual meeting shared a total sum of 605.958 billion naira as Federation allocation for the month of May to the three tiers of government. From the amount, the federal government received 242.120 billion naira. The states received 194.19 billion naira. And local government councils got 143.742 billion naira while oil producing states received 26.901 billion naira as derivation. In a statement issued in Abuja by the spokesperson of the Federal Ministry of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Charles Sungodo, the gross revenue available from the value-added tax for May was 181.078 billion naira as against 176.710 billion naira distributed in April resulting in an increase of 4.368 billion naira. In education, the Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board JAMB has lauded the introduction of the National Identification Number NEEN in its examination exercise. JAMB spokesperson Dr. Fabian Benjamin, who disclosed this in a statement in Abuja, said it helped in getting rid of impersonation multiple registrations and other malpractices associated with examinations. According to him, the partnership with the National Identity Management Commission, NIMSI, which mandated the use of NIN in the registration process, made it virtually impossible for hired examination takers to register multiple times. He also refuted a media report that claimed that the introduction of NIN affected the revenue of JAMB and caused it to drop to 5.8 billion naira, stressing that JAMB was neither a revenue generation agency nor aspiring to be one. Benjamin therefore stressed that NIN was a good initiative because it had helped to clean the system and restore its credibility. Back here, the Aquabum State Audit Service Commission Bill 2021 has gone through second reading as the State House of Assembly commits the Bill to Committee on Public Account to study and report back to the House within one month. The bill, which is an executive bill sponsored by the state government, had the leader of the House, Udo Kiri Anakban, leading debate on it during plenary. 
The House leader stated that auditing bodies should be an independent organ of government where duties and structures will be well encapsulated. In their contributions, members said the bill, when finally passed, will facilitate international grants to the purse of state government. Also considered at the day's plenary were a bill for a law to provide for the acquisition of ranches, grazing and administration of livestock 2021, sponsored by Victor Equerre of Mparenian State Constituency, and a bill for a law to regulate rights and obligations on the tenancy agreements and relationships between landlords and the tenants, including the procedure for recovery of premises and for connected purposes, sponsored by Barista Otobong Bob of Nsurubium State Constituency. And while the House has a joint plenary to tomorrow, Thursday, June 20. Meanwhile, the House has a joint plenary to today, June 24, to reconvene. Away from that, the chairman of Kwabam State House of Assembly Committee on Information, Barista Nefyuk Dennis, has said members of the 7th Assembly have executed constituency projects in each of the 26 state constituencies in the state. Speaking with our Assembly correspondent Anthony Essen, the House spokesperson who said the constituency projects executed by the lawmakers were mainly classroom blocks, explained that members were responsible for nomination of persons to implement the constituency projects across 26 state constituencies. A project will be placed there. Say, okay, you will do this and this and this and this number of projects. And you don't even do it. You nominate somebody. So this time around, what was given to us was for us to go and ensure that primary schools, you know, no matter what you do, you have teachers are being trained. His Excellency is employing more teachers. They are bringing more books. You need the classrooms. You need those facilities. So we are targeting, we decided to target the classroom blocks. Each of us, I want to challenge you, go back to your constituency and find out or ask the member representing you. We've carried out by way of nominating somebody that built, renovated to at least two classroom blocks in each of our state constituencies. He said the lawmakers supervised the process to ensure timely delivery, adding that the projects were implemented under the Interministerial Direct Labour Program of the state government. We were given a specific period to uh, nominate people who were carrying out those jobs and we supervised and we ensured that from time to time we went there and inspected what they were doing and it was carried out under the interministerial direct level. So those things are what lawyers will call reps is it speaks for itself. You can see them, you can touch them. We didn't go to the moon to build those classroom blocks. It has to be in one of those villages. The Achinan lawmaker who challenged constituents to go and find out the locations of the constituency projects in their areas stated that for Achinan State constituency where he represents, the projects were executed in Achinan Institute. Away from that, seasoned Minister of the Gospel of Christ and legal practitioner Reverend Barrister Philip Oko has held a three-in-one event tagged Faithful God where he celebrated the golden jubilee of his years on earth with a special thanksgiving service to appreciate God for delivering him from a near-fatal illness as well as a public presentation and book lunch of his fifth classic entitled Objection, My Lord. Speaking at the event, the celebrant Barstauko narrated the significance of the day's celebration, saying it was born solely out of the desire to thank God for delivering him from a near-death experience. He also hoped that the events in his life would rub off as motivation and reminder to persons who are expectant of a touch from God in any area of their lives that God is still in the business of saving lives and upturning bleak stories. God put me 
out of the mouth of the lion. It was an impossible deliverance. Doctors and nurses who took care of me while at teaching hospital for five months will speak about my health condition. In fact, for your information, this is not celebration of Philip Kuhn, it's celebration of a faithful God. Yeah. When I was down and out, one of the things they enemy talked was my voice. Doctors said I had speech impairment. I could not talk to them when I came out of coma. But I back in that condition, I said to God, I'm a pastor, I'm a preacher of the gospel, I'm a barrister, and I need my voice. No, if they take my voice of what use will be my life. But I thank God, men and brethren, I'm talking with great eloquence and strength. And I'll keep preaching this Jesus until he returns in glory. Meanwhile, in their remarks, the guest speaker and founder inside Bible Church, Dr. Silvanus Okafia, the senior pastor, God's House of Refuge evangelist Ezekiel Atang, as well as the chairman of the occasion, Professor Ifyong Johnson, ably represented by Enyitim Fon Ekere, among others, harped on God's faithfulness in the life of the celebrant and extolled his qualities as an upright and dedicated servant in God's vineyard. He gave me my first opportunity to preach in the fellowship. By the grace of God, we studied law together. Anything we have to do, it has to do with a precentor. We always have a light. We have somebody to fall back to. I thank God for your life. That you've been able to pull through this is clearly the grace of God. That you came up as one of the early revivalists, you know, of our time. Federal government, because the planet was literally on fire because of the grace of God that was upon this man of God. When you need that experience, it is only when you have touched that point that you understand what person had passed through. Furthermore, during their various testimonies, friends, acquaintances, business associates and neighbors all took turns to thank God for the life of Barrister Philip Oko, especially as God has preserved his life to celebrate his 50th birthday as against what could have been due to his critical condition of health few months back. With all the contributions, God did not allow to go in vain. It would have been so sad that today we are talking of a burial instead of a celebration. But God made us to celebrate. We were together in the same world in the house system. And I thank God because at the end, all of us celebrate like this. We are not many that stand for God among young men in our community. So if we, if we had lost him, we would have been a great battle. The God's prayer. So I want to say to God, thank you. We are happy. We are always with you. And our prayer will never cease. We know that God is going to perfect everything. High point of the event was the cutting of the celebrant's 50th birthday cake as moderated by Pastor Ezekiel Atang, as well as the launching of the celebrant's fifth classic titled Objection My Lord. To get a copy of the book titled Objection My Lord, the author and celebrant can be reached via telephone on 0803-540-1200. Or zero eight zero eight two seven zero zero three three four. You are listening to the News and Planet Radio 101.1 FM. Let's take a breather and then bring in more stories from the foreign sports and entertainment scenes. Do stay with us. Hit music. Brand new hits. New music. New music. Trending and still banging. Can't get enough of it. Woo-hoo! On Planet 101.1 FM, Uyo. Thanks for staying with us. And now on to the foreign scene where former Philippine President Benigno Nanoy Aquino, the reserved skin of one of Asia's most famous political families, has died. At 61, Aquino, who was in office from 2010 through 2016, was the only son of the late former president Corazon Aquino and her assassinated husband, Senator Benigno Ninoy Aquino, both revered for leading the struggle to restore democracy in the Archipelago nation. President Rodrigo Duterte's spokesman announced Aquino's death hours after local media reported the former leader had been rushed to a Manila hospital. Elsewhere, an indigenous group in Canada says it has found hundreds of unmarked graves at the site of a former residential school in 
Saskatchewan province. The Kowasa's First Nation said that the discovery was the most significant, significantly substantial to date in Canada. However, the group did not specify the exact number of graves found. It comes weeks after the remains of 215 children were found at a similar residential school in British Columbia. In sports, NBA club Boston Celtics are reportedly finalizing an agreement with Brooklyn Nets assistant Emil Docker to make him the franchise's new coach. The former Nigerian international will replace Celtics president of basketball operations Brad Stevens, who stepped down as coach earlier this month to replace Danny Ainge running the franchise's basketball operations. 43-year-old Udoka is said to have separated himself quickly in the search process and his candidacy was boosted with strong recommendations from key Celtic stars including Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown and Marcus Smart, who played for Udoka on Team USA in the 2019 FIBA World Cup. And on the entertainment scene, Forbes icon and Nigerian fashion boss Jeremiah Obudo popularly known as Swanky Jerry, has announced that he is set to star in Netflix's first-ever African reality TV series. The fashion icon who made the announcement on his Instagram page has reportedly dressed up literally every A-lister in the continent. Reports say the superstar stylist is pushing boundaries and heading to the global scene. It's been the news on Planet Radio 101.1 FM. Oh, yo. But before we go, a quick recap of the major stories. The presidency has said it has no hands in the current amendment to the Nigerian Press Council Act and the National Broadcasting Commission Act by the National Assembly. The Federation Accounts Allocation Committee at its virtual meeting shared a total sum of 605.958 billion naira as Federation allocation for the month of May to the three tiers of government. Seasoned Minister of the Gospel of Christ and legal practitioner Reverend Bajda Philip Uko has held a three-in-one event tagged Faithful God where he celebrated the golden jubilee of his years on earth with a special thanksgiving service to appreciate God for delivering him from a near-fatal illness, as well as a public presentation and book lunch of his fifth classic entitled, Objection, My Lord. On the foreign scene, we told you that former Philippine President Benigno Noy Noy Aquino, the reserved scion of one of Asia's most famous political families, has died at 61. And in sports, a reporter that NBA club Boston Celtics are reportedly finalizing an agreement with Brooklyn Nets assistant Emil Docker to make him the franchise's new coach. For comments and coverage of a newsworthy event, do call our newsroom on 0812-770-2940. Visit our website on planet101fm.ng and follow us on Twitter. Beg your pardon? Also like our Facebook page at Planet 101 FM. Uyo. The news was edited by Jane Uwa. As we end the news endeavor to positively touch lives this week, try it today and enjoy the satisfying feeling that accompanies doing good. My name is Xavier Robert, wishing you a rewarding day.